All right, let's apply our knowledge of orbital motion now to study a system where you probably know what the answer is gonna be. That's the motion of the moon in orbit around the Earth. So if we're given the radius of the moon's orbit, let's calculate the period of that orbit, how long it takes the moon to go around the Earth. Now you know the answer, it's a little less than a month. So let's calculate it and see how close we get to the real answer. All right, what's the period of the moon's orbit? Well, we just derived this expression, Kepler's third law, relating period to orbital radius. So if we plug in the numbers that were given, um, now G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared. M1 is the mass of the Earth, 5.972 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. R is this orbital radius. So we plug all that in, take the square root, you can try that at home. You get 2.38 times 10 to the 6 seconds. Uh, and that probably doesn't feel very intuitive, so let's turn it into days. So one minute, 60 seconds, one hour, 60 minutes, one day, 24 hours, and guess what? That's 27.5 days. Now the actual value is 27.3 days. This actual value um, we could model if we knew tons more physics. Uh, you'd have to study elliptical orbits, you'd have to um, consider the, the variations in orbital radius, um, the irregularities of shape of planet Earth, the influence of the sun, it would get super complicated. But we were able to use just physics six level physics and get remarkably close to the actual value. So the tools we've learned in physics six, even though we're not doing calculus, this is first semester physics, they're still super powerful. It can get us really close to the actual answers.